why you need to buy a fixed deferred annuity now. <laughs> Crazy, I know, but we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to share with you the reasons you need to buy a deferred annuity. So if you like what you see, subscribe and then give me comments and thumbs up for sure, because this will be something that you're probably not quite thought about before. So we're going to use the Society of Actuaries. They do this PowerPoint presentation, which I'll put a link to the show notes, which I absolutely love. And we're going to start with life expectancies uh, by counting for males. And they have the same thing for females, too, up here. And what we'll see is in 1985, we got a lot of orange and darker red, and then, which shows life expectancies between ah, right there, which shows life expectancies between 62 and essentially 72. Going to 2010, though, a lot of the orange turns blue. So we got life expectancies between 71 and basically 82. And the females, the same thing. So the question is, what happens? Well, people are living longer. That's a big deal. All right. So wh why is that? All right. That's great, Josh. What does that have to do with annuities? Well, let's go down. to. I want to show you something here. I think you'll find this pretty interesting. So we're going to look at the life expectancy at 65 for a couple different uh, mortality tables that have been used in the past. And so the mortality tables you typically use to value pensions reflect a little more than a little, a little more uh, longevity than the general population because the bulk of pension plan liabilities by definition reflect only people who have actually worked long enough, uh, live long enough to have worked long enough during their adult lives. The mortality tables, uh, duh, 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 okay, uh, from 1970 to 2000, in absolute terms, longevity has been slowly but steadily increasing. But with a pension plan, what affects the payout most is how fast life expectancy is increasing relative to age 65. So look, at they're saying in 1971, the mortality table numbers they were using, if you're 65, you basically had, you're going to live until you're about 78. Fast forward to 2000, if you're 65, you're basically going to live until you're 82. So we fast, but that's not good enough because that says at the end of the day, this is what the facts are from when it comes to pensions. Now, there is something to be considered. Undervaluing future mortality improvement understates pension liabilities. So if you undervalue mortality improvements like this is kind of doing, they're saying, well, we haven't really had a significant change. It's slow but steady. But if we look at actually what the remaining life expectancy at 65 is not your life expectancy, but the likelihood you're going to remain a certain amount of years. In 1970, they figured you lived about 80. All right. So that's about two years higher than what it was before. In 19, 2000, you lived about 83 or 84. Again, that's about two to three years higher than what it was before, which means that they say you're going to live about 18.9 years. And before you'd live only 17.8, which is a 9% increase. What does that have to do with anything? Well, let's go back to this. Annuities and pension companies, they look at the mortality tables like, like you look at your mortgage statement because that is their liability. How much they have to pay for how long? And if they're saying your life expectancy in 1985, let's just say on average is 15 years. So if you hit 65, they're going to have to pay the average guy or lady for 15 years. That means they can run actuarial studies that say, how much do I have to pay on average to the average person. Let's just say it's $500 a month. So for every $100,000 you put in, you're only gonna get five, you're gonna get $500 a month in your pension. All right, so that's, they say your average life expectancy is 15 years. We're gonna pay the average person $500 a month. Some people are gonna die in year 10. Some people are gonna die in year 20. The guy who dies in year 10 essentially sacrifices his money to pay the guy who dies in year 20. They don't know which guy is gonna happen to. So it's all a risk. Some people are going to lose money. Some people are going to make money. We just don't know on the front end, so it's worth taking the risk. That's up to you to decide, but that's how pensions and annuities work. It's called the mortality credit. If you're living beyond your life expectancy, you're living on essentially borrowed money when it comes to your pension. In 2010, though, they're saying, well, the average person here, because they're living longer, lives 20 years. So instead of paying for 15 years, we got to pay for 20 years. So the average person, we're going to pay $400 a month as opposed to uh, uh, $500 a month because we're going to pay longer. And if we pay longer, we're going to pay less for a longer period of time. If we pay, if we if they live shorter, we're going to pay more for a shorter period of time. Does that remind you of anything? That's the social security system. That's why if you take it at 62, 
you get paid longer, so they pay you less. If you take that 70, you get paid shorter, so they pay you more. It's literally Social Security and actuarial tables are absolutely agnostic when it comes to the average person. You are not the average person, though. You are an individual, so if you need to concentrate on how this affects you. So you say, look, Josh, 1985, I'm in good shape. I'm not going to die in 15 years. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I whatever. I'm going to live for 25 years. Well, in that case, you'd be well advised to do an income annuity for sure because they're basing your life expectancy on 15, which means you're going to get money from people who smoke, people who skydive, people who rest, race car because they're going to die before their life expectancy. You're going to live beyond it. So you're essentially going like that, going from them to you. The ill uh, health are subsidizing the better health. That's how it works. So let's say you got $100,000, all right? And as Josh and his twin brother, Joe, where both have 100000 bucks, we're both going up to USAA and saying that we want an annuity uh, to give us a guaranteed income off the course of our rest of our lives. I go up there and I say, I got a 1985 life expectancy chart. Joe goes up there and says he has a 2010 life expectancy chart. They say, that's great, Josh. You're going to live, you're going to get $500 a month. Joe, you're going to get $210 a month. Uh, uh, you get $400 a month. Joe's like, wait, 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 why? Because Josh has a life expectancy only of 15 years. Joe, you have a life expectancy of 20 years. And Joe's like, wait a second, we're the exact same. Everything's the same about us. Why do I only have a life expectancy? Why do I have a life expectancy of 20? He's got a life expectancy of 15. Because we're using older mortality tables for Josh and we're using newer mortality tables for you, which means Josh, because he's just one tiny little sand in this whole beach. He don't care about Josh, the insurance company. They care about the beach. They don't care about that little pebble. So Josh is going to get more for less. But Joe says, but he's not going to live less. He is going to live just as long as I do. He said, well, that might be true for Josh, but for the, all the pebbles on the sand, it's not. And Joe said, well, how do I get that 1985 mortality table? And they said, you can't. You can't. Well, how come Josh got it? And here's the reason you need to do a deferred annuity now. Because Josh bought a deferred annuity in 1985, and thus he locked in his mortality contract, his mortality tables of 1985. You waited 25 years to buy the same annuity, thus you're locking in higher mortality tables, longer mortality tables. If you would have bought the same thing when Josh did in 1985, you too would have got $500 a month. But because you waited, you're only going to get $400 a month. Now, both of you in reality are going to live the same amount of time, 20 years, whatever it's going to be. But because Josh locked in the mortality table when he first purchased that deferred annuity, we're going to lock him in for that mortality table, meaning he's going to get more money. That makes sense? So what you can do is you can say, remember, a deferred annuity isn't deferred income tax. It's deferring the annuitization. I'm not, I'm turning over $100,000 to mutual or an insurance company, but I'm not getting an income stream. I'm deferring the income stream. Now, at some point, I'm going to change it from deferred to immediate, which means I immediately start the action to get the money from it. Every year, I'm getting $500 a month. But when I defer the annuity, I lock in the mortality tables for that year in which I did it. And those mortality tables are going to follow me 20, 30 years hence. And in 20, 30 years hence, when the average life expectancy is now 25 years, but my mortality table, because I locked it in back then in 1985, is only 15, I'm going to make out like a bandit relative to the person who buys an annuity then. Because I'm going to pay, they're going to pay me over 15 years is what they're thinking, but they're going to pay that guy over 25 years because, again, it's based on the average life expectancy. That right there in a nutshell is why you do the deferred annuity. You lock it in today in order to lock in that mortality table for the future, 10, 15, 25 years from now. So critically important to do this, my friends. Now, two things you got to think about. Make sure the insurance company is highly rated for sure. I'm going to do a uh, thing on USA, one of the ones I like here next time. Make sure the insurance company is highly rated. Number two. See if you can actually add to it, all right? So some deferred annuities, you can only drop, it's like a CD, you put 10,000 bucks in, you can't add to it. That's, we don't really want that so much. Uh, we want one you can add to. So you call your insurance company and say, look, 
Uh, six years from now, if I want to add another hundred thousand dollars, can I do that and keep the same contract? And that's what you want. You want one that's deferred that you can add to later on down the road for sure. Um, and remember, we're talking fixed annuities and again, fixed, whatever they're deferred. They're, all that simply means is you're not, there's no risk of loss other than the insurance company going bankrupt. So the interest rate could be fixed. The interest rate could change, uh, but it's not a variable rate that has equities in there or anything like that. We're just talking a simple good old fashioned fixed deferred annuity where I'm fixing it that I can't lose money. If that makes sense. Um, and that's what you want. Can I add to it? What are the mortality tables if I, if I annuitize this in the future? Is it based on today when I lock in the contract or is it based on future? If you're looking at that and the insurance guy you're talking to doesn't know, you need to look at the contract before you sign up. If you're talking to some guy on the phone and he or she doesn't know, you need to look at the contract. If I annuitize $100,000 20 years from now, what does it pay me? If I annuitize $100,000 today, what does it pay me? Now, they're going to have a hard time. No one will pay you uh, 20 years from now because annuities are based on mortality tables and your interest rate at the time. So they don't know what the interest rate is going to be. Just ask, is a mortality table in 20 years based on today or is it based on a future mortality table? If it's based on a future mortality table, then we don't want that. That defeats the purpose. But there are lots of annuities. When you lock it in, you're locking in the contract, you're deferring it today to get an income stream based on today's numbers in the future, which is wonderful. Now, hope this helps. I love this stuff. I'll put a link to the show notes. As always, thumbs up, questions, thoughts, concerns, put them down below as comments. And uh, uh, fire away. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on deferring an annuity and why you need it today. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.